Hello everyone, welcome to Design Hub. In Design Hub, we provide quality technical content related to the design industry using practical concepts. So, to upgrade yourself please subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. In this video, we will do a static stress and deflection analysis of an L-shaped cantilever beam. First, let's see the problem statement and make the required assumption for the study. The problem statement of this study is to determine stresses and deflection in an L-shaped cantilever beam. We have to find the stresses at the ZZ section which is located at four elements from the fixed end of the cylindrical rod. You see it in the given figure. We know the dimensions of the L-shaped cantilever beam. Now, let's see what strategy we will follow. The strategy for this problem will be generating a high-quality fine mesh of element size 2.5 mm to get accurate results, and obtain deformation curves after the results. Also, since both the members are assembled one should assign material individually at the time after modeling each. Now, the first step we will follow is to make both the members in SOLIDWORKS according to this figure here, or you can download this file from GrabCAD. And you can start the study by going into simulation and creating a new study. Before you start with the analysis process, it is important to set the units for SOLIDWORKS simulation. Set the default unit according to your preference. Step 3 is assigning a material. The major objective of material selection in the context of product design is to minimize costs while achieving product performance goals. We will use alloy steel, and 2014, T6 aluminum for cylindrical and rectangular members, respectively. First, let's see about alloy steel. A type of steel known as alloy steel is alloyed with other elements, ranging from 1 to 50 weight percent, in addition to carbon, to improve the material's numerous qualities. These elements frequently contain boron, silicon, manganese, nickel, etc. Aluminium, cobalt, copper, cerium, etc. are less prevalent elements. Alloy steels can contain a wide range of elements, and each one can improve the material's ability to resist corrosion, heat, and mechanical stress. While higher additions of up to 20 weight percent boost corrosion resistance and stability at high or low temperatures. Smaller additions of less than 5 weight percent tend to improve mechanical qualities, such as improving hardenability and strength. This material has a yield strength range from 200 to 2100 megapascals, and an ultimate tensile strength range from 295 to 2400 megapascals. These two properties accompanied by Brunel hardness vary widely with composition and heat treatment. The second material used is 2014, T6 aluminum for a rectangular member. 2014 aluminium is a 2000 series aluminium alloy, the main alloying addition is copper. 2014 T6 aluminium is 2014 aluminium in the T6 temper. To achieve this temper, the metal is solution heat treated and artificially aged until it meets standard mechanical property requirements. The T6 temper includes solution treatment for 1 hour at 470 degrees Celsius, water quenching, and then artificial aging for 24 hours at 120 degrees Celsius. The material can achieve the desired precipitation hardening by being aged artificially. This material has a yield tensile strength of 415 megapascals, an ultimate tensile strength of 470 megapascals, and a Brunel hardness of 130 to 145 Hb. The typical application of this material is high-strength structural components for aircraft, military vehicles and bridges, weapons manufacture, and structural applications. Now, we will assemble these members.
Step 4 is applying the load to the model. The L-shaped cantilever beam is rigidly supported at point A, and subject to a downward force of 1,500 newtons applied to the vertical face, at the end C. Step 5 is about generating a high-quality mesh. We will be using high-quality standard fine mesh in this study. You can see the details of the mesh in this mesh details dialog box. The sixth step is to run the study after all the essential steps are performed. We will plot the graph of required stress. Now, we will display and analyze the results. This exercise investigates displacements and stress at various locations on the model. We will also plot the graph for specific stress like Y, normal stress, XY, shear stress and Y, displacement. We can see here stress has a major impact on cylindrical member. and displacement is more on rectangular beam. Also, we will animate the displacement.
We will plot graph for X normal stress on ZZ section which is located 4 elements from the fixed support. You can analyze the, the curve here. Also, plot graph for Y normal stress and then analyze it and compare it with previous one. After this, proceed with the same steps from previous videos, creating the discrete contour and introduce boundary options as mesh to plot graph easily. Now, make graph for shear stress XY at section ZZ. That is all for this video. In further videos we will learn about connections and how to use it. Also, what is the role of factor of safety? Thanks for watching. Until then learn and grow.